Thanks, Carl. How are you? By God's grace? Yeah, by the grace of God and the best in you. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. We need to be chatting. Yeah, I love to. I'm going to chat with Sandra and I'll see you in a minute. Okay. She understands it, but I want to. We'll talk about it. Okay? Yeah, I think I have a way to be Yeah, I've got, I've got something I've been praying about. It. Good. Yeah. All right. Good Great. stuff. Yeah. The Lord be with you. What a great joy it is to be gathered in our Lord's holy house for his service to us by means of his very uh, word, name, and body and blood. And we give him great thanks for all the gifts, including a, a beautiful way to begin the service with Kelsey's voice and Trudy's playing. And um, we're so grateful for the gifts that God has given to us here at Trinity. Uh, this is the 15th Sunday uh, after Pentecost, and we'll be. Uh, well, continue to be fed by our Lord through His Word as uh, our faith continues to grow and be strengthened in He who is our head, Jesus Christ our Lord. Our bulletin is, has been printed for you. For those online, you'll find it in a previous post on Facebook. And I pray that the service to you will be edifying and a great joy in the week to come. We'll begin with our hymn of invocation, which is, I lay my sins on Jesus. Thank <laughs> Thank you. 
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto thee all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended thee, and justly deserve thy temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray thee of thy boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death. Of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord. I have fled to you for refuge. Hear my prayer. O Lord, give ear to my pleas for mercy. In your faithfulness answer me, in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before all you.
the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and strength, the author of all godliness, hear the devout prayers of your church, especially in times of persecution, and grant that we may ask in faith what we may attain. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the 15th Sunday after Pentecost is from Genesis chapter 50. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, It may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil that we did to him. So they sent a message to Joseph, saying, Your father gave this command before he died. Say to Joseph, Please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin because they did evil to you. And now please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear. I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. The epistle is from Romans, the 14th chapter. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinions. One person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains, and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls. And he will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. The one who eats, eats in honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So that whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be both Lord of the dead and of the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother, or you, who do not despise, why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then, each of us will give an account of himself to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. others their 
trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. to him, who owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, have patience with me, and I will repay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of the servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when the same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will repay you. He refused, and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in his anger, his master delivered him to the jailers, so he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, new for us men, and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again in glory, to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who stayed by the cross. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
mercy and peace be unto you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Isaac's sons could not stand their little brother. They were jealous of Joseph because their father appeared to love him more. Isaac showed love to Joseph. He showered Joseph with gifts. And the brothers' envy, well, it consumed them. The sin in their hearts and minds drove Joseph's brothers to devise a plan to murder him. Yet, out of the last, at the last moment, out of pity, they decided rather to sell him into slavery. However, they would tell their father that he was dead, that he had been eaten by a fierce animal. With brothers and sons like this, who needs enemies? And from that point on, Joseph's life appeared to be headed south. Yet despite living as a slave, Joseph thrived in the house of Potiphar. That is, until Potiphar's wives desired him. And he declined her advances leading to his unjust arrest due to her false accusations. And so Joseph was in prison. And even though in prison, Joseph continued to prosper, fulfilling his God-given vocation as prisoner, serving his fellow prisoners. Eventually, by God's mercy, Joseph found favor with Pharaoh. He was appointed second in command of all of Egypt. And that was a good thing. For Joseph's planning saved all of Egypt from a great drought that God had sent upon that once fertile land. Isaac, Joseph's father, still thought him dead. And when the drought brought Joseph's brothers down to Egypt, that they might seek grain and that which they required back home, they were seeking this mercy from Pharaoh. But little did they know that the man that they were addressing in Pharaoh's stead, the one that they were seeking mercy and grace from, was their little brother, Joseph. Eventually, Joseph revealed himself to his brothers. And Joseph forgave them of their sins, all of them, against them. And the absolution he spoke to his brothers resembled what Jesus proclaimed as he was dying on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And this is the context for our Old Testament reading today. When we step back in in our reading with Joseph's father Isaac dying, leaving Joseph's brothers very, very fearful. They were afraid that the revenge that they had earned would now be levied upon them. What will Joseph do now that he has all the power and no longer has to worry about his death. Would he hand down the revenge that was his right to be levied? Well, the brothers need not worry. For when Joseph saw their great fear and their great deep despair, Joseph wept. My dear friends, Sin is a trap, and those caught in the teeth of sin are to be mercy, 
and forgiven, not teased or stomped on. Joseph wept. And then he said these words. He said, do not fear, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive, as they are today. So do not fear. I will provide for you and your little ones. The evil that comes upon us in our lives is truly evil. Have you been hurt by others? Have you been betrayed by those who love you? Have you sinned against your brother or sister? And I just don't mean your physical brothers and sisters. I'm talking about those here in the family of faith. I mean your neighbor, your co-worker, or anyone for whom God has put into your life. Well, if you are a son or daughter of Adam, then you are guilty. Does the weight of your sin crush you? Our old Adam demands a pound of flesh of payment for the pain and suffering that he's endured. We want to bring about revenge whenever we are hurt. This greed, that's the way I see it, this greed resurfaces in me every year when our country remembers what happened 19 years ago as the terrorists attacked our neighbors. You might recall that we as a nation, we wanted revenge. Justice was to be had, but that wasn't all that was desired. Justice, yes, but we wanted to hurt those who hurt us. That is our nature. We all want to give others what is fair, as long as that fair means that they are the ones receiving on the receiving end of our so-called justice. And these same demands are being made all over our country today. Those who have been wronged seek restitution on their terms. This only leads to chaos. And chaos is rooted in sin. And it seeks no end. Just more chaos. And so we cry out, Lord, have mercy. And he's had mercy. Today our Lord, our God, has ordained that we hear of our brother Joseph. And yes, he is our brother. And this brother of ours, Joseph, reveals the image of Christ. For he forgives those who have harmed him. He doesn't give them what they deserve. He gives them mercy. He loves them. Now consider Peter in our Gospel. He comes to Jesus with a, a pretty practical question. How often should I forgive my brother? Up to seven times? And you see Peter, by saying seven, that was, that was actually quite generous in those days. But our Lord is not about measuring forgiveness. I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times seven. Now, for those quick with math, 490 times isn't some divine number. It's not like on the 491st time your brother sins against you, you have the right to give them what they really deserve. It doesn't work that way. Jesus' point here 
is that if you're going, if you're measuring forgiveness and doling it out like Joseph handed out grain during the drought, you know, during scarce times, then you've missed the point. Have you ever considered why it is so hard to forgive those who sin against us? I mean, it really does come down just to this, doesn't it? The truth is that we don't want to, to forgive those who sin against us because we don't trust that God will work out all things for our good, as St. Paul confesses in Romans 8. If I forgive the one who sins against me, I have lost, and they have won. I'm afraid that they will be getting away with something if I forgive them. And I'm afraid that if I forgive them their sins and let go of my anger and hatred, then they will only come back and hurt me again. Because you see, in my sinful heart, I don't want everything to work out for their good. I want everything to work out for my good. Repent. For when you forgive those who sin against you their sins, they aren't getting away with something. When you forgive someone their sins, you confess the divine truth that Jesus paid the price for their sins on the cross. You're making that confession. And those sins, by the way, those sins committed against you, you have no right to them. They don't belong to you anymore. If you try to hold those sins against them, is to strut around as the self-righteous one who has been wronged, you're now making yourself a slave to the sin committed against you. And when you refuse to forgive someone their sins, you are saying that Jesus didn't die for them. You are withholding the gospel. Get behind me, Satan. And that's really the issue, isn't it? Whether it's in church or at home or at work or in our lives, we all want things to be fair. We we want them to be fair as long as fair means the other guy gets what he deserves. And that is why at the very heart, at the very core of the Christian church is the forgiveness of sins. That's why it's the very first thing we do when we are gathered together. Because friends, it is what gives us life. It is the very heart of God for, for me. Dr. Luther wrote it this way, everything therefore in the Christian church, everything, is ordered toward this goal. We shall daily receive in the church nothing but the forgiveness of sin through the word and sign sacrament, to comfort and encourage our consciences as long as we live here. So even though we have sins, the grace of the Holy Spirit does not allow them to harm us. For we are in the Christian church, where there is nothing but continuous, uninterrupted forgiveness of sin. This is because God forgives us, and because we forgive, bear with, and help one another. Now let me ask you a question. What happens when we don't forgive? What happens when we assume the role of the unmerciful servant in our gospel? Truly, truly, I say to you, all your sins, all of them, will require pain, which you will never be able to repay. It's a hard thing to learn to forgive your brother who sins against you from Heart, isn't it? Our flesh wants nothing to do with the mercy Christ bestows upon us. Think of Christ as the, the master who forgives the wicked servant. 
that debt that he forgave was thousands of years of salary. The wicked servant went after his the one who owed him for owing him a couple a couple hundred bucks. So Christ comes to us. He forgives us this massive debt. And the whole intention is that once you receive that forgiveness, once your debt is excused, you no longer have to repay. It's now that gift is to be shared with your neighbor, whom has sinned against you, who has trespassed, who has debts against you. Hard thing to learn, isn't it? And it will take a lifetime for you to learn. But here's the good thing each day begins anew in God's sight. And that is why we pray every day. We pray the prayer our Lord has taught us forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Friends, God is merciful. Our Lord forgives your sins, all of them. And that debt is far greater than you can ever repay on your own. He loves you with a love that knows no end. For you see, Jesus is the greater Joseph, who forgives your sins, even though your sins have hurt him deeply. But rather sending you off to prison to pay off a debt you could never repay, he puts himself in your place. And he takes your sorrow and your hurts from you. All those things that people have done to you, he takes them away. And in exchange, he gives you forgiveness, life, and salvation all in his name. And as Joseph fed his de de desperate brothers in the desert, Jesus comes to you to feed you this day with more than simply grain and water. He, he feeds you with his own body and blood so that you now eat and drink forgiveness. A forgiving master has called you to his table this day that you may receive not what you deserve but what he died to give you. So come, your place in the church of forgiveness of sins has been reserved. And in this place, at this altar, the mercy of Christ for you will be yours, so that the mercy of Christ through you will be for your name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds. In Christ Jesus alone. Amen. We rise. <laughs>
daughter-in-law of Gary and Mary, who endured uh, her, her daughter-in-law, I think it was Mag, um, her mother died suddenly, and so Gary and Mary are kind of covering for Gary Jr. So we keep, uh, keep them in our prayers, as well as for Catherine Thompson's family. She was a dear sister in Christ here who died in, in Christ last month, and they just recently had her funeral. Um, so we'll keep them in prayer. As well as for Moses, our dear sister, who usually typically joins us, I understand that she was hospitalized yesterday. Don't know if she's been released yet, but she is, uh, we'll be praying for Moses as well. So let us pray for all people according to their needs, as well as the Church of God in Christ Jesus. Almighty, most merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give thee thanks for all thy goodness and tender mercies, especially for the gift of thy dear Son and for the revelation of thy will and grace. And we beseech thee so to implant thy word in us, that in good and honest hearts we may keep it and bring forth fruit by patient continuance and well-doing. Most heartily we beseech thee so to rule and govern our church universally, with all its pastors and ministers, that we may be preserved in the pure doctrine of thy saving word, whereby faith towards thee may be strengthened, charity increased in us toward all mankind, and thy kingdom extended. Send forth laborers into thy harvest, and sustain those whom thou hast sent, that the word of reconciliation may be proclaimed to all people, and the gospel be preached in all the world. Grant also health and prosperity to all that are in authority, especially to the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of this state, and to all our judges and magistrates, and endue them with grace to rule after thy good pleasure, to the maintenance of righteousness and to the hindrance and punishment of wickedness, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. May it please thee also to turn the hearts of our enemies and adversaries that they may cease their enmity and be inclined to walk with us in meekness and in peace. All who are in trouble, want, sickness, anguish of labor, peril of death, or any other adversity, especially those who are suffering for thy name's sake and for thy truth's sake, comfort, O God, with thy Holy Spirit, that they may receive and acknowledge their affliction as the manifestation of thy fatherly will. But although we have deserved thy righteous wrath and manifold punishments, yet we entreat thee, O most merciful Father. Remember not the sins of our youth, nor our many transgressions, but out of thy unspeakable goodness, grace, and mercy, defend us from all harm and danger of body and soul. Preserve us from false and pernicious doctrine, from war and bloodshed, from plague and pestilence, from all calamity by fire and water, from hail and tempest, from failure of harvest and from famine, from anguish of heart and despair of thy mercy, and from evil death. And in every time of trouble, show thyself a very present help, the Savior of all men, and especially of them who believe. Cause all needful fruits of the earth to prosper, that we may enjoy them in due season. Give success to the Christian training of the young, to all lawful occupations on land and sea, and to all pure arts and useful knowledge, and crown them with thy blessing. Receive, O God, our bodies and souls, and all our talents, together with the offerings we bring before thee, for thou hast purchased us to be thine own, that we may live unto thee. Father, hear us as we pray for those who request prayers, including Christopher, as well as Julie, and the family of uh, Catherine Thompson, Gary and Mary's family as well, be with those enduring the effects of COVID-19, give them peace and healing as it be your will. We ask that you give peace and healing in our land as well. As well as those enduring the recent hurricanes and wildfires, as well as those who are continuing to fight the fires. Be with our shut-ins, Tommy, Esther, Dolores, Mary, Don Maria, Sandy, and Randy. We also commend into our hands, your hands, Father. Moses, that you would keep her safe and bring her home safely, that she might return to us to receive your gifts. 
these and whatsoever other things thou wilt have us ask of thee, O God. Grant, us, grant unto us, for the sake of the bitter sufferings and death of Jesus Christ, thine only Son, our Lord and Savior, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. The hard Lord be with you.
come to the table with the Lord. Take and eat the body of Jesus. Give it to them. Take and eat the body of Christ. Take and eat the body of Jesus Christ. Give it to them.
Christ, given unto death for you. Take and eat the very body of Jesus. The body of Jesus Christ, given unto death for you. Take and eat the body of Christ. Take and drink the blood of Jesus, shed for you. Take and drink the blood of Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink the blood of Jesus, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink the blood of Jesus Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Now may this, the true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith, and true life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord. Take and eat the very body of Christ, given unto death for you. Take and eat the very body of Jesus. Take and eat the body of Christ, given unto death for you. The Lord bless you and keep you all to your baptism and grace, for you are his. Amen. Take and eat the very body of Christ, given unto death for you. Lord bless you and keep you. Take and drink the blood of Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink the blood of Jesus Christ, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink the blood of Jesus shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink the blood of Jesus, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Now may this, the true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith, and to life everlasting, depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Almighty God, 
that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Amen.
Please be seated. It's a great way to start a week, isn't it, on Sunday, with the idea of a mighty fortress is our God. And we go forth with him. Um, before us, behind us, around us, there's not a place that we are that he is not keeping us. But we are his. So keep that in mind in the week that is to come. Um, got some interesting things coming up in the Trinity Times where we're just about ready to kind of break loose here on the building. So we've got some exciting things coming up. We had a wonderful uh, construction meeting this last week and got some good things to talk about. But I uh, did want to make mention, if you haven't signed up, um, please consider doing so for one of the tours that we have uh, listed there next Saturday, either at 11 or 1 o'clock with our construction liaison, uh, Pastor Emeritus Hunter Hoffman is going to be taking tours through the building so you can kind of see where we are and uh, it might be a good time to see it before things start ramping up. So um, good things there. I've got the Trinity Times and I'll have those for you here shortly. But again, I just pray our Lord's peace be with you and keep you always in the true faith with that whole mindset that it is truly the forgiveness of our sins, which is the cornerstone of not only the church, but of our very existence. So consider that next time you have a neighbor or, or a friend uh, sin against you. So the Lord's peace keep you. Thank you. God bless. Uh.